and welcome to part three in this series. And in this quick video, we're gonna be discussing how you want your comic pages sent over to you in a digital form from your artist collaborator, because they can come over as a PSD, as a JPEG, as a TIFF. You know, there's a plethora of different ways they can be sent to you, and you need to decide how you want them sent. And if you don't know or not sure what you want, we need to go back to that first video where I explained that not only are you the writer of this comic, but you're also the project manager. So for example, if your comic is just a black and white comic, once you know, you've got your artist set up, you know, he's ready to go, you need to speak to your letter collaborator and ask them how they want those pages formatted and sent over to them so they can work their magic. You know, but then if you've got a colorist as well, you know, before you speak to the letter, you need to speak to the colorist and ask the colorist how they want the pages set up and formatted so they can do their magic and then the letter as well. But in an ideal world where there's no time zones and that kind of thing, you'd get them all onto a Zoom call and get them speaking to each other and find out, you know, how they set their pages up. But if that's not possible, you need to be the project manager, you need to communicate with them all and ensure that everyone gets their files in the correct way. Okay, so part four. This one is all about common sense and communication and hopefully you've seen throughout these videos so far, communication is key on how you speak with your collaborators on your books. And on more than one occasion, I've seen writers you know, fall flat on their face because they think they've hired an artist collaborator you know, to do both the pencils and inks on their comics, but the artist thinks they've actually you know, been hired for the pencils and an ink is gonna come in later on and finish up the work. So basically what I'm saying is just have a little chat with your collaborators and just you know, lay down exactly what's expected from each other just so there's no you know, misunderstandings and no hard feelings going forward. You know, I know you're gonna do this, you're gonna know you're gonna do that, and the project's gonna move forward perfectly. Also, at the same time, this is a great way to discuss how you intend to work with each other with regards to the script, because me personally, as I've said on the channel many times, I'm quite flexible with the way I work. So, you know, if I've written a page that's five panels and I've chosen all like the camera angles and stuff like that, but the artist I'm working with said, you know what, I could do it in four. It would be more dramatic, you know, I can do it like this. You know, is that gonna be a problem if I tweak the script slightly? Me personally, I don't have a problem with that, but I know some writers are very precious with regards to their scripts, and there's nothing wrong with that. I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but you know they may have a vision that they wanna see, and that's how they wanna work. So it's best to get these things out of the way, just so there's no misunderstandings later on if you get a page back and there's only four panels when there should have been six. So you know, communication, talk, be honest with each other. Also, this is a great chance to speak to your artist collaborator and find out how they work as well. And what I mean by this is, you know, are they intended to send you thumbnails before they move on to their pencils or do they do pencils and then inks? Because, you know, if they're sending you, you know, the thumbnails and the pencils, it gives you an opportunity to have a look at what they're planning to do, you know, what they've come up from, you know, from reading your script before they move on to that final inking stage because it's really, really hard to change the art when it gets to inks than it is from pencils and thumbnails. So again, find out how they work and then find out how you work it's going to make the whole project a lot smoother to run just ensure that there's no problems going forward so communication is key have a chat be honest be open and make a great comic together and welcome to part five hopefully you've enjoyed these videos this week if you have don't forget to give us a like share and a subscribe and ring that bell so you don't miss out on any of my future content the purpose of this video is just to let you know that you may need to have an open conversation with your artist about deadlines you know you may have a competition that you want to enter in and as long as everyone knows you know what kind of deadlines you're working to hopefully you can get the comic done you know within that time frame also, it's good to find out from your artist collaborator what kind of frequency that they're gonna be sending the comic pages to you. Because I've worked with some artists that will send me you know, a page at a time when they're ready. I've also worked with other artists that will send me half a comic when it's ready, or the entire comic in one go as well. For me, that's okay. I don't mind working like it purely because you know I do all my own lettering and coloring, so you know I'm pretty much a one-man machine when it comes to stuff like that. But if you're working with colorists and letterers, you cannot drop an entire comic on them and expect them to, you know, hit that deadline that, you know, may be unfeasible because unlike an artist, you know, an artist may be working on one project or two projects at the same time, colorists and letterers tend to work on multiple projects. So you, what you'd be doing is you'd be asking them to move their entire work schedule just to appease your deadline. It's not fair, it's not right, and you can't do it. This goes back to last week's video when I was saying that you need to treat this like a job and act really, really professional and treat all your collaborators with courtesy and kindness. And as long as everyone knows about the time frames and the constraints and what you're working to, hopefully all the goals are achievable and you can get your comic done at that right time. 
as well as that, when you find out about the page frequency, it's also gonna allow you to budget for paying your artist collaborators well, because you are paying your collaborators, aren't you? We've been through this, don't work for free. But you know, if you know that you're gonna be getting, you know, I'm gonna get two pages a month or a whole comic a month, you know how much money you need to put aside or take out from your savings to pay those artists, collaborators and letterers, because again, you need to be professional. You cannot ask artists, letterers, colorists, to wait to be paid because they have bills as well. So you can't say, well, I wasn't expecting those pages this week, so I can't pay you to the end of the month. You can't do that. So by having these conversations ahead of time, just having an honest conversation with everyone and you know you can make sure that everyone is happy, the project will come along, the comic will be made, and you'll get your first comic done. So hopefully you've enjoyed these videos this week. I will see you in the next one. And remember, if I can make comics, anyone can. Thank uh you. -huh.